Is there any such thing as the best all-in-one flight controller? Of course not, because there's so many different drones around that need different things. Size, flight duration, speed, and so on. But looking back over what I've built over the last 12 months, I've used this Beast F7 from iFlight in most of my quads. Well, anything up to about five inches, and there's good reason. It's just about the best all-in-one flight board that you'll find. And although it's a single whoop size board, it's packed full of goodness that hasn't ever let me down. Hello, and welcome to the Worldly Bloke channel. This is YouTube, you know what to do. Subscribe and hit the bell for more videos like this. I'm just starting another build using this tiny little iFly Beast and I've realised I've never directly reviewed it. It was in my AOS 3.5 build review but not in any great detail. And I'm beginning to think there's some black magic going on with this. So the first thing you'll notice is this is a single 25 by 25 millimeter whoop size PCB. It's not actually a stack, but it packs in so many features. It's an F7 MCU, the BGA STM32 F745 with a built-in Bosch BMI 270 gyro. And surprisingly, it's got 16 meg of onboard flash memory. So you can tune this using the black box logs. And it's only got a micro USB connector on the side here, which is a bit of a shame. It's not a big deal. I generally prefer USB-C these days. And you've got five UARTs on here and a real current sensor. And the ESCs can handle up to 55 amps continuous with up to 60 amp bursts running BL Heli S. And you can power this off anything between 2 and 6S. And it's got this DJI compatible socket for an air unit or a Cadex Vista. But do take care if you're using 6S and an air unit. There's no built-in 9 volt back and the power out from this connector is full VBAT. So you'll need a separate back if you're going to run that. But if you're using a Cadex Vista, there's no issues because that works up to 6S, which is around 26 and a half volts. Now this board is a 25.5 millimeter square standard whoop size mount pattern. And the actual board is about 32 millimeter square. And that's pretty small. And although this is really intended for whoop size quads, I've used it on several five inch builds, mainly because it's great and small and it only weighs about eight grams, which is incredible. And that makes for a very lightweight five inch build. And as you can see, it's made to be mounted like a diamond mount, which is normal for whoops and toothpicks. You can see the arrows pointing forward there, but it's easy enough to 3D print or buy a cheap mounting adapter plate to mount it square to a frame if you've got normal mounting points. In the box you get wired XT60 and XT30 battery connectors, which is a nice touch. There's mounting hardware, including soft mounts. And you get a couple of these wired connectors for the DJI socket on the side of the board there. And you get two low ESR noise suppression capacitors. These are 470 microfarads, 35 volts, so they'll work for anything up to 6S. And the reason that iFlight can make this board so small is because they use the small BGA chipset instead of the more standard QFP STM32 chips. And so far, I've had no issues or breakages on these. And as usual with iFlight, they provide a very comprehensive and clear set of wiring diagrams for pretty much every combination of receiver, VTX and camera, including all the Betaflight port settings to select analog or digital video. You don't have to use DJI or Cadex Digital VTX because there's nothing to stop you using an analog VTX. And these diagrams show you how to set it up. And because this is all plug and play with DJI and Cadex, you can put together a very lightweight five inch quad with hardly any effort. But just remember not to use the air unit with a 6S battery without having a nine volt back. And there's loads of links on the iFlight website to find one of those. 
There's a beta flight build target for this, but there isn't one for iNav yet. But it doesn't have a barometer, so it's pretty unlikely anyone would want to use iNav on this. And this is the V2.2 version, which has got a slightly different gyro to the earlier versions. This all sounds pretty perfect, doesn't it? Well, it's not quite. There's a price to pay, and this isn't exactly cheap at around $110 or £90. But you've got everything you need on one very small PCB, and it's ready to go. And this is my fourth build using these without any issues at all. So I'm gonna carry on using them for anything up to a five inch build. And the benefit of using this on a smaller build is on the black box memory. It's just something you don't get on small all-in-one boards. And that makes black box tuning just so much easier. As always, thanks for watching. And if you found this helpful in any way, why not subscribe or maybe buy me a coffee to support the channel. I'll see you next time.